society, policymakers, regulators, we should be a lot more curious about the industry, not only because we want to identify what are the best ways to manage it, but also what are the opportunities within Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin technology, to drive the clean energy transition and promote sustainability. Hello and welcome to the business of blockchain. I'm Jane King. Today we continue our special series on blockchain use cases sponsored by BitDeer, a global Bitcoin miner listed here at the NASDAQ. In this episode, BitDeer joins us to discuss the winds of change that are moving the Bitcoin mining industry forward in welcome ways. Thanks in large part to the wind, the sun, new mining technology, and the power of markets. And here to explain are Samantha Robertson of BitDeer and Elliot David of Sustainable Bitcoin Protocol. Welcome, so great to have you here. So Elliot, your company is focused on helping a Bitcoin mining industry reduce its carbon footprint. So tell me about the size of the Bitcoin mining industry and how much it's grown. Sure, um, well first we have to think about what Bitcoin mining actually is. It's really just a data center industry, a particular, uh, particularly focused on securing and protecting the Bitcoin mining network. The global Bitcoin mining network consumes about 145 terawatt hours of electricity per year. Um, that's about 0.25% of global energy. If we put that into context, compared to an industry like cement, it's you know, one one thousandth of 1%, some, some extremely small number of global emissions. But because we all care about climate change, we wanna decarbonize the economy, um, Bitcoin mining also has this unique opportunity to not only be carbon neutral, but actually one of the most climate positive industries and asset classes in the world. Mm, interesting. So Samantha, tell us about BitDeer. And it, the company is headquartered in Singapore, right? But That's you have correct. operations really all over the place, even here in the US. So tell us about BitDeer. BitDeer is headquartered in Singapore. And what makes our company really unique is that the founder of our company is a guy named Jihan Wu. And he is someone you could think of as the Warren Buffett of Bitcoin. He's been there since the beginning and is somebody who really understands the market cycles, which is critical when you're dealing with a commodity. We have six data centers globally. Three are in the US. Our largest is actually in Texas. We also have two in Norway and one that energized earlier this year, which is a joint venture with the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Bhutan. So we've all seen the headlines. Bitcoin mining uses as much energy as a small country. It sounds alarming, but what do the headlines get wrong about that? Yeah, I think what a lot of the headlines get wrong about the industry stem largely from a lack of education. Um, you might have seen headlines saying that Bitcoin mining was going to use up all of the world's electricity by 2020 or that it was going to boil the world's oceans. Um, obviously, that has not turned out to be true. Um, I think that society, policymakers, regulators, we should be a lot more curious about the industry, not only because we want to identify what are the best ways to manage it, but also what are the opportunities within Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin technology, to drive the clean energy transition and promote sustainability. Talk to me about what you're doing in Texas and how that fits into this whole sustainability story. Yes, I think that it is um, probably a surprise to most people that uh, Texas has the largest um, renewable energy portfolio in the U.S. because all of that is market driven. It's not um, a renewable portfolio standard that's coming from uh, political motivations. An important feature of our operations as Texas is our ability to participate in the demand response market, which is separate from the energy market, but allows the grid operator to procure reliability services. And um, that is something that during times when uh, supply and demand are out of balance, we can curtail our load such that there's enough energy to balance supply and demand so that it's going to priority use cases such as residential customers or other critical load. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know they had a lot of a, a very a string of 90 degree days or something this summer and there was some kind of you know uh, navigation of the electric systems. So explain how you worked with them. Sure. So um, this was a the second hottest summer on record in Texas. There were I think 40 consecutive days of triple digit temperatures. So essentially what we would do is um, curtail for several hours a day in the afternoon so as to avoid this idea of peak time on the grid. Um, but the second was, um, and this has something to do with renewable penetration, is in the evening hours, 
when solar starts to come offline and the sun sets, there's typically a mismatch or an imbalance of supply and demand on the grid. And we were also available to curtail, again, as a feature of that reliability service, such that whenever the grid operator needed us to, we would come offline. The energy industry is starting to see the value of essentially a load that we can design as complementary as we want to the grid. Because historically, there hasn't been that, right? If you had demand response, it would be coming from hospitals or factories. But there never before has been a load that could monetize electricity into a globally liquid currency in a way that is fully interruptible, fully location agnostic, and completely flexible. And for that reason, Bitcoin mining is the ideal demand response load. If you look at international energy agency data, they say that in order to, in order to achieve our net zero targets by 2030, we're going to have to 10x our demand response capabilities. And as far as I see it, Bitcoin mining is the best solution uh, for that particular problem. Interesting. Now, on this subject, we spoke with Le Chier, the professor of electrical and computer engineering at Texas A&M University. He's helping the grid to remain stable under some tough conditions. Let's listen. One of the key challenge, engineering challenges is, is to keep the supply and demand of electricity balanced almost in a uh, second by second basis, right? Therefore, as we envision that future where we see a significant decarbonization, uh, there will be undoubtedly uh, a lot more renewable energy on the supply side. And if, because of that, there will be undoubtedly a lot more need for demand flexibility on the demand side. So whatever tools that we have at our disposal, we need to have an all hands on deck approach to getting as much demand flexibility as we could. And, uh, you know, there has been quite a few large miners, Bitdia being one of them, uh, which have responded uh, quite strongly to the grid dispatch uh, signals that is uh, during those uh, stressed moments. And I think these are uh, promising uh, signs that uh, this new emerging demand could be utilized for grid flexibility purposes. So it's fascinating to see what's happening in Texas, known to most people as oil country, now leading the U.S. in green energy. And Bitcoin miners are doing some interesting things with recycled heat. Explain that. Yeah, so uh, running computation at a large scale, like Bitcoin mining, one of the one of the end results is a lot of heat. Um, that's why you'll often see Bitcoin miners operating in regions that are very cool, so they don't have to actually spend money on cooling the machines themselves. Um, there's been a lot of really interesting use cases for the heat. Some people are heating up hot tubs and running spas. Some folks are drying and curing you know, vegetables and meat, um, running greenhouses. Um, but I'll throw it to Samantha mm. as an actual end user of the heat. That's correct. At our data center in Norway, we're using immersion cooling for the miners. That means the uh, computing servers are immersed in a dialectic oil. And with that, it transfers heat into a piping system that heats up water for the municipal government that they're using to power greenhouses so that they can grow crops even in the winter in a very remote northeastern part of Norway, which is quite snowy, as you can imagine. Now, Elliot, Bidir is a customer of yours, so explain sure. how you're working together. Yeah, and you know, we actually see Bitdeer as a sort of partner um, in how our protocol functions. Um, the way that Sustainable Bitcoin Protocol works is a Bitcoin miner that is using a clean energy source, whether it be hydro or renewables or nuclear or waste methane gas, um, they'll go through a third party audit, meaning they'll have that energy use in their operations verified because we believe in proof of work and transparency and so do our mining partners. And then once they are verified to be using clean energy, every single time they mine a Bitcoin, they receive a sustainable Bitcoin certificate. So now they have two assets on their balance. So they're mining Bitcoin, right? They receive Bitcoin from the Bitcoin blockchain, and then they also receive this SBC. So in the case of Bitdeer, for example, take for example, the Bhutan project, right? They have a site in Bhutan that's using hydropower in Bhutan, which is one of the most sustainable countries in the world. Um, a third party will verify that they are using green hydropower and then every time they mine a Bitcoin at that facility, they will also receive an SBC. 
they can then sell this SBC to BlackRock or Fidelity or uh, 21 shares. Basically, a, a holder of Bitcoin that wants to make a transparent and auditable claim about the sustainability of their Bitcoin holdings without saying that one Bitcoin's green and one Bitcoin's not, because of course, every single Bitcoin is fully fungible. Well, thank you so much, Samantha and Elliot, for coming and explaining that. It's truly really fascinating to see how Bitcoin mining has evolved over this short time. So thank you so much. And that is it for this edition of the Business of Blockchain. A special thanks to BitDeer for sponsoring this discussion and our series of videos focused on blockchain use cases. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ Market Site.